It's week 36 of A Year of Wisdom. Let's get to reading. Day 250, Job 7. Is not man consigned to labor on earth? Are not his days like those of a hired hand? Like a slave, he longs for shade. Like a hireling, he waits for his wages. So I am allotted months of futility and nights of misery. They are appointed to me. When I lie down, I think, when will I get up? But the night drags on, and I toss and turn until dawn. My flesh is clothed with worms and encrusted with dirt. My skin is cracked and festering. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is but a breath. My eyes will never again see happiness. The eye that beholds me will no longer see me. You will look for me, but I will be no more. As a cloud vanishes and is gone, so he who goes down to Sheol does not come back up. He never returns to his house, his place remembers him no more. Therefore, I will not restrain my mouth, I will speak in the anguish of my spirit, I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I the sea or the monster of the deep that you must keep me under guard? When I think my bed will comfort me and my couch will ease my complaint, then you frighten me with dreams and terrify me with visions, so that I would prefer strangling and death over my life in this body. I loathe my life. I would not live forever. Leave me alone, for my days are but a breath. What is man that you should exalt him, that you should set your heart upon him, that you attend to him every morning and test him every moment? Will you never look away from me or leave me alone to swallow my spittle? If I've sinned, what have I done to you, O watcher of mankind? Why have you made me your target so that I'm a burden to you? Why do you not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For soon I will lie down in the dust. You will seek me, but I will be no more. Proverbs 7 My son, keep my words and treasure my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Tie them to your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And call understanding your kinsman that they may keep you from the adulteress, from the stranger with seductive words. For at the window of my house I looked through the lattice, I saw among the simple, I noticed among the youths, a young man lacking judgment crossing the street near her corner, strolling down the road to her house at twilight, as the day was fading into the dark of the night. Then a woman came out to meet him with the attire of a harlot and cunning of heart. She's loud and defiant. Her feet do not remain at home. Now in the street, now in the squares. She lurks in every corner. She seizes him and kisses him. She brazenly says to him, I have made my peace offerings. Today I have paid my vows. So I came out to meet you. I sought you and I have found you. I have decked my bed with coverings, with colored linen from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, with aloes, and with cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until morning. Let us delight in loving caresses. For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He took with him a bag of money, and he will not return till the moon is full. With her great persuasion, she entices him. With her flattering lips, she lures him. He follows her on impulse, like an ox going to the slaughter, like a deer bounding into a trap until an arrow pierces his liver like a bird darting into a snare, not knowing it will cost him his life. Now, my sons, listen to me and attend to the words of my mouth. Do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths, for she has brought down many to death. Her slain are many in number. Her house is the road to Sheol, descending to the chambers of death. Ecclesiastes 7. 
A good name is better than fine perfume, and one's day of death is better than his day of birth. It is better to enter a house of mourning than a house of feasting, since death is the end of every man, and the living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for a sad countenance is good for the heart. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. It is better to heed a wise man's rebuke than to listen to the song of fools. For like the crackling of thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This too is futile. Surely extortion turns a wise man into a fool, and a bribe corrupts the heart. The end of a matter is better than the beginning, and a patient spirit is better than a proud one. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger settles in the lap of a fool. Do not say, Why were the old days better than these? For it is unwise of you to ask about this. Wisdom, like an inheritance, is good, and it benefits those who see the sun. For wisdom, like money, is a shelter, and the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of its owner. Consider the work of God. Who can straighten what he has bent? In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider this. God has made one of these along with the other, so that a man cannot discover anything that will come after him. In my futile life, I have seen both of these a righteous man perishing in his righteousness, and a wicked man living long in his wickedness. Do not be overly righteous, and do not make yourself too wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Do not be excessively wicked, and do not be a fool. Why should you die before your time? It is good to grasp the one and not let the other slip from your hand. For he who fears God will follow both mornings. Wisdom makes the wise men stronger than ten rulers in the city. Surely there is no righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. Do not pay attention to every word that is spoken, or you may hear your servant cursing you. For you know in your heart that many times you yourself have cursed others. All this I tested by wisdom, saying, I resolved to be wise. But it was beyond me. What exists is out of reach and very deep. Who can fathom it? I directed my mind to understand, to explore, to search out wisdom and explanations, and to understand the stupidity of wickedness and the folly of madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman who is a snare, whose heart is a net and whose hands are chains. The man who pleases God escapes her, but the sinner is ensnared. Behold, says the teacher, I have discovered this by adding one thing to another to find an explanation. While my soul was still searching but not finding, among a thousand I have found one upright man, but among all these I have not found one such woman. Only this have I found. I have discovered that God made men upright, but they have sought out many schemes. And as always, thank you so much for being here today. If you haven't already, subscribe button right my there head's and full. click the bell and my if you want to get notifications and hit that like button too I know and I doubt. see you tomorrow you'll carry me Bye. out of the storm I'm standing at the crossroads I'm lost without a clue I need a big pink neon sign to show me what to do I thank you, Lord, it glorifies you when you're the only answer. I praise you, Lord, for holding what's too much for me. And I'm amazed by you, Lord, because nothing's too big and nothing's too small to lay at your feet.